YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters. Today I'm going to be reviewing a very inexpensive electronic drum amplifier. Now this is an amplifier by the brand Cool Music, which you can find on Amazon.com. I'll post a link down below, and this is for the DK35S. Now, unfortunately, it's taken me so long to get to this video because I bought it probably about six months ago. At the time of making this video, there aren't any available on Amazon uh, at the moment. But I'll still post the link down there just in case here in you know a couple weeks or a couple months, they're available again. But anyway, this is a very inexpensive drum amp. I think it cost me around $100, $120, somewhere around there. It features two channels, 50 watts of power, Bluetooth connectivity, as well as a USB input where you can record directly to USB audio, which is pretty interesting. I've never really seen that feature on an amplifier before. It also has a microphone input as well as two quarter inch inputs on it. And you can see it up on the screen there right now. And uh, actually this is the first time of really playing electronic drums through it today. I'm gonna be testing it out for really the first time. I've basically just been listening to music through it since I got it over here at my drum room about you know a week or so ago and finally got around to making this video today. So we're gonna check it out and see how it sounds. Um, it sounds good for music, but we'll see how it sounds with electronic drums. Now for the drums themselves, I'm actually going to be playing my Pile PTE D D306, which I have here in this bag. And uh, this is actually an art portfolio case, which actually works quite well uh, for a case for this little drum, tabletop drum thing. So I take that out of there, and that's what we're going to be playing through the amp. And now for the pedals for the PTE D06, I'm going to be using these rock band pedals that I customized uh, to use with that drum set. Uh, I actually need to make a video about this, I haven't done it yet. But that'll come eventually. But this is a big improvement over the pedals that it comes with. But that's not really what today's video is about. So we're going to just hook it up to this amp and see how it sounds. Now sound quality over camera audio is really, you know, kind of hard to tell what it's going to sound like in general. But I'll give you my honest thoughts on this thing uh, once I hook it up and play it. So first off, here's some playing and then I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so that was really loud. I was like actually pretty shocked at how loud this thing goes. I only had the volume, let me cover that light so you can see. I only had the volume up, you know, the master volume about right there. So what is that, like three? And it's super loud. I mean, it's definitely loud enough to play in a band. And I was really, really impressed with the bass response. Uh, it's got a lot of low end to it. Sounds super full. Um, yeah, it sounded really, really good. Of course, like I said, it's a camera, uh, you know, microphone you're hearing there, so that doesn't really do it justice. Um, one thing I did notice, though, is I couldn't get the reverb to do anything. And I noticed that at home as well when I was messing with it there. Um, I don't know if there, I mean, I don't even hear a reverb tank in this thing at all. Maybe it only works on the mic input. I guess I could test that too and see if that, that works there. Um, and the reason why I have two cables plugged in here is I have left and right channels both coming out of the uh, pile and then plugged both into both channels here on the drum amp and that works just fine like that. So that way you get, you know, if you have things panned, you don't have to worry about it. Of course, it's not a stereo amp, it's just a mono amp, but you don't have to worry about like changing the panning on your drums or anything like that if you use both channels uh, because they'll both be present in a, a mono signal. But yeah, I mean, I could totally use this in a live setting it would be plenty loud enough. Um, so let me go ahead and show you guys. Um, well, first I'll show you the Bluetooth. Let me do that. 
So I already paired my phone to the Bluetooth before, but it's super easy. Um, all you have to do is you just hold down oops, this middle button here, the play button, and cover that light again. And then that will turn on the Bluetooth and hold it down until you hear that sound. Then it should just pair because I already paired it. And there it goes. So, I mean, you just pair it like any other device on your phone. You know, you go into your Bluetooth settings and uh, pair it. Uh, but I don't need to explain that. So let's go ahead and play some music here. And just to give you guys an idea. I don't want to play too much because I don't want any copyright violation. But so yeah, that works really good. I always use this to listen to music while I'm in here. And um, the volume for the Bluetooth is controlled by your phone. It's controlled by your device. It doesn't seem to matter what setting you have there uh, as far as the volume on the Bluetooth, at least that I've been able to tell. But you can easily control it with your phone, which is nice. You know, that's kind of better anyway, so you don't have to go over to the amp every time. And yeah, so, well, I guess let's test out that mic and see if the reverb works on the mic, uh, the microphone input. Check, check, check. Hello, test, test. Okay, so it does seem like that the reverb functions for the microphone input, which is a little bit odd that it doesn't do it on the line input, but I guess that's fine. Uh, most electronic drums have built-in reverbs of their own, so you don't really need it on the line inputs, uh, but it is nice that it has it on the uh, microphone input. So if you wanted to use this as a personal uh, PA system, you can do that as well. I mean, you could even sing karaoke with this thing. It has the uh, Bluetooth connection, so you could put in music and sing along to it if you wanted to. Testing, testing, one, two. And the microphone sounds pretty clear. Let's turn it up a little bit. Check, check, test, test. Definitely loud enough to use as a personal monitor. Um, this is an SM57 microphone, which doesn't have the highest output, uh, but it's still pretty loud, and I could probably even make it louder. Check, check, and that's up pretty loud. If I had that up that loud with the drums, it would be really loud. Uh, I'd almost be afraid to hear it. Uh, but fortunately, the different channels have uh, independent volume, so you can uh, adjust the sound uh, for each individual channel. All right, now let me show you guys how the USB recording works. So all you need is a USB thumb drive like this, and you just stick it in the USB connection here. And then, uh, after it recognizes the USB device, all you have to do is, and I, I don't know if Bluetooth will work at the same time as that. Maybe, uh, maybe I should test that. Um, but, yeah, I probably should test that. But first off, let's go ahead and record a little bit of just drumming. Uh, with the USB. So all you have to do then is just press the record button here and then you can see it's already recording. Light is flashing on the USB drive and I think it's recording still. Yep, it is. So okay, let me go ahead and play and then I'll just sync it up to the video so you guys can hear the actual USB recording of me playing. All right, so unfortunately, it seems like when you do the recording, it actually disables the Bluetooth feature. And that actually doesn't surprise me that much since the, the controls are kind of shared in the same panel. So it's either you get to record to USB or you get to use the Bluetooth function, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. It would be, would be nice to be able to record uh, Bluetooth and audio simultaneously. Uh, but, you know, for what it is, it's still pretty cool. And you can get some decent sounding recordings of anything you have plugged into it. Now, of course, the other way that you could do that uh, if you wanted to record music that you're playing to, you could always use the aux input on your drum module or the second input on the amplifier itself. You could have one input for drums and another input for music, and then you could record yourself that way. Um, so it's still pretty cool, you know? The fact that it does that at all, I think is pretty interesting. All right, that's gonna be all for this one today, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and the like button. Uh, what did you think about the cool music uh, DK35S <laughs> drum amp? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to follow me on Spotify and Apple Music. All of my music streams on all the streaming services. There's Demonic Sweaters as well as my other project, which is called Manasota. So check those out down below. And if you're interested in taking drum lessons, I also offer those online through Zoom, Google Duo, Skype, etc. So anyway, you can contact me on Instagram if you're interested in those. And my Instagram is just at demonic underscore sweaters. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.